learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So it looks like next week we're going to be able to start building onto our tiny house again. Uh, next week will be uh, one month. As I've said in many videos before, we're going to spend $500 a month to build our tiny house. And so we're hoping that we can have this done in 10 months. So that's $5,000. Of course, we're coming way under budget. Now, here's the thing that I guess I've not really clearly explained very well. $500 a month is what I have budgeted that we can spend on top of our regular budget. Because I keep getting a lot of questions about this. So if I have to buy a tool, for example, that tool has to come out of that $500. That is why I'm trying so hard to find free materials or very cheap materials or used materials so I can reduce the cost of the house and still be able to buy the tools that I need. Next week, we're going to buy insulation that we're going to put down in the floor. And we're going to use R19 floor insulation. I think I've said R19. I meant R13. R19 is going to go on the walls. And then you get up to like R26 and R36 ceiling. Now, if you look up the zoning... Of, of different zones for climate. Lowe's actually has a page where you can go on to and look at what kind of insulation you need for your, your ceiling for your zone. And then we're gonna buy the plywood, $15 a sheet, and we're gonna have six sheets. Now we're not buying tongue and groove, which I've made videos about that in the past. We've made these little center boards here that will compensate for not having tongue and groove. And that'll save us a hundred bucks by not having tongue and groove. So with the insulation and the plywood, we're already up to $200 out of the $500 that we're uh, gonna spend. The other thing we've decided that we're gonna do is we decided we're gonna buy another chainsaw. Since cutting wood is going to be our primary source of heat, we felt like it was necessary to have a backup chainsaw. Everything I have that we find to be a necessity, we have a backup of. Like we have solar panels, but we have a backup generator because if it's not sunny outside, then I got to have the generator to, to charge batteries. We haven't ran into that problem. I think I got enough solar panels now that we're, we're okay with that. We had to do it one time because I had to cover the solar panels during a storm so the hail wouldn't fall and break them. So I had to run the generator then. So the generator is kind of the backup. We have two electrical sources, water. In order to run the well pump, we have to use the generator. Well, if the generator or the well pump, either one break, my backup is the IBC tank. We fill the IBC tank up with water. I always try to fill it up before it gets half empty. That way, if something breaks, I have time to go and replace it and still have 150 gallons of water that I can back up on. In short, we're going to get another chainsaw. We'll go ahead and get a chainsaw. So the chainsaw is going to be the cheap one at Home Depot, a Ryobi at Menards. It's going to be around $100 and $150 for a 14 or 16 inch, 38 cc. So I'm, I'm happy with that kind of chainsaw. I'm not a lumberjack. I'm just cutting down small trees, you know, maybe that size. And we'll be able to start getting our firewood collected so we're ready for this coming winter. And then we're going to have to buy things like tarps. We're, we have one tarp here, but we're going to need more tarps to cover this up. So, you know, there's another 25, 30 bucks. We're going to buy paint. We're going to paint the floor just so since we're building it so slow that we don't damage the wood the tarps will keep the insulation from getting wet all this starts to add up so this is the ibc tank i've been telling you about that holds all our water we use this water to pump into the camper for our showers and drinking water and you know all our needs and then we just fill this up every couple weeks when it gets about half full we also use dry clothes and just all kinds of different things. It becomes a table out here. In yesterday's video, I was talking about how we're going to heat this thing in the winter so it doesn't freeze up. As I've said in the past, we got this homemade outdoor wood furnace that I just built that is going to pump heat through ventilation to this. And I'm just going to insulate this with some styrofoam insulation. Well, somebody suggested that we use straw bales, and I have thought about using straw bales. When you start to think about cost of things, and you start analyzing the differences in cost, straw bales, yes, would absolutely be a better insulator. Completely agree. But I don't need it to be a better insulator. I just need a little bit of insulation around this thing to help keep it warm. So with all my firewood, I'm gonna have plenty of heat. It's not like I'm gonna run out of heat. I'm, 
I'm heating a six foot by six foot box and I'm gonna raise this a couple degrees. You know, I just wanna keep it above 32 degrees. So I'm gonna buy styrofoam insulation. If I buy straw bales and I wrap it up, I did a quick calculation. I figured I'm gonna need like eight bales per side. And if they were like, I don't know, $5 a piece, plus the top and all that, it's gonna be 160 to $200, just estimating, to wrap that water tank in straw bales. Then you gotta buy the tarp, the tarp it so they don't get wet. But if I buy insulation, styrofoam insulation, even at like $9 a sheet, I figured it up it'd be anywhere from $60 to, to $100. So that's $100 savings just using styrofoam so I don't have to go overkill spending a lot of money on something that I really don't need, which in turn saves money so I can invest it into the house or other tools I might want to use. So in yesterday's video, I was showing you that I had sealed up all the little cracks and crevices in my outdoor wood furnace just to be sure that none of the uh, harmful fumes get inside the camper. I told you I bought this furnace cement for $7 a, a, a container and I only used like one and a half containers and I got the chimney all sealed up. It says it's ready to accept temperature after 24 hours. If you touch this stuff it's still very wet. See? And I thought my goodness well that's not gonna work. 24 hours and it's not dry. So I came out and I started playing with it. Here I had some that I put right here and I put some heat to it, hardened right up, perfectly fine, except it bubbled up a little bit. So I got online and I started looking at what they were saying in the reviews on Amazon and everybody had really high reviews of it, but they all said that if you put it on too thick, and I guess if I'd have paid attention to the instructions a little better, I did read the instructions, but it says you can only coat it with a thin coat of one thirty seconds of an inch. So not much. And I'm sure, you know, I got it all gooped on in there. So what it said in the reviews is just let it dry for a week or two. Make sure you do it in the off season and it'll dry up and then you can start a fire and it'll cure it, make it rock hard. So I've been playing around with my little torch here, trying to figure out if what they were saying was true. And so I had a thin coat of it right here. I had some JB Weld, but I took that off and I wanted to see how that would work. So I just coated it with this, this stuff right here, real thin. And like I said, I torched it. It turned a whitish color and boom, it was perfect. If you decide to seal up your wood stove, make sure you do it during the summertime when it's not gonna be used. If you're gonna goop it on like I did, it's gonna take forever to dry. Now, if you follow the instructions, which I think is near impossible, you're gonna be fine within a day or so. A few days ago, I made a video and I was showing you that I was digging up some blocks here, some bricks for the wood stove, as a matter of fact. A lot of people in the comments said, Rob, don't step on the pretty flowers. I don't forget what they call them, irises, and I don't know what they call them. Well, I knew better than step on them. Carolyn already saw them. Well, it turns out it's these beautiful purple flowers. Now, Carolyn's favorite color is purple, so this was perfect for her. I wanted everybody to know that I didn't step on the flowers. As you know, I have spent an enormous amount of time reading a 400 page, I think it's 400 page code book. It's a, it's a book of county codes, of every type of building code you can imagine, fire code, electrical line code, uh, just everything you can imagine. I've been trying to read to understand if we are in violation of anything. Specifically, I keep worrying about, are we in violation of parking or camper here? and living in it until we can get the place cleaned up. Do I need to get a permit or anything like that? Because a lot of counties, like my dad right now is in Florida and he's building a house. Well, in order for him to park his fifth wheel on his property, he has to have a building permit saying that he's building a house and he's living in the fifth wheel while he's building it. So I keep thinking there's gotta be something like that. Although I, I haven't found anything that says that. Just down the road, I don't know, five, six, seven miles, there is a fifth wheel parked on a piece of property. They're not building anything, and it's been there a long time. You can see that, you know, they got a garden planted around it. So I keep telling myself, there's no way I'm in violation of anything. Of course, it's always in the back of your mind. And over time, I've gotten more comfortable and more comfortable with the idea that we're not in violation, the more I read. Well, this morning, <laughs> the police showed up next door. Carolyn was outside when they stopped. 
And she comes back in, she says, the police are here. That's how she said it, the police are here. I'm like, what? So I jump up thinking, oh my goodness, they're gonna be upset about the camper, the solar panels, you know, what are we doing up here? So I was prepared with my explanation, what we're doing, you know, we're cleaning up the property and we're gonna uh, build a built building. You know, I was gonna be as honest as possible. I, I come outside and I wait, see if they wanna come over. And they're over at the neighbor's house. <laughs> see, Carolyn says, the, the police are here. And they're talking to him. And finally they just left. And I thought, you know, it's sad that we live in a society that you can't park a camper on your own property without being worried that you're in violation of something that maybe the neighbor complained and wants you to move your camper. He doesn't like it. I just thought it was funny that Carolyn came in and said, the police are here. So thanks for watching.